Hi there! Another node that we added to our node list. You can find the link to the list in the description. And the node is value to label. You can download a node by clicking the download button. After you've downloaded the node, you can drag it into your node map and start using it. So let's go to Billbox. And in this video, we'll demonstrate how you can use the value to a label node with the updated timer node. So let's start by creating a new 3D game. And we'll add a UI screen. Connect the UI screen to our UI of the 3D world. In our UI screen, let's add a default label. We'll rename it to Timer. So let's go to our 3D world. And our suggestion is if you use timers for countdown in your game, you'll be better off adding it into the 3D world. The reason for that is if you add a pause option to your game, the world will freeze and the timer will also freeze and you will not have problems with restarting timer when you're going to be using a timer inside a UI screen. So let's go to our cube and in our cube, let's add a timer. And now let's drag our value to label node. And this is the value to label node. The value to label node has two options. For label type, we have entity and UI option. Then we have the label name. So if you have a label type set to entity, we can add a label to our cube and we can enable it on create it. And now any value that we pass in into this node will be displayed in that label. To demonstrate that, we can then actually connect the value to create it and see what is the value that we get from create it. And we'll go to our 3D model and let's make it semi-transparent so we can see the text that it is in the middle. Let's set it to 100. Let's click preview. Now we can see our transparent cube and inside there we can see the value true. And that's the value that is sent from created when the entity is created. So now let's connect the value to label to our timer. So we'll assume that you never used the timer before and how the timer works is when you enable the timer, whatever the time you have specified, it will start counting down. Once that time reaches zero, then a timeout event will be fired. You can use the reset input to reset the time at any point and you can use the pause input to pause the timer. Like we mentioned, when the timer reaches zero, it fires a timeout and it will start from the beginning. So the timer is going to continue firing timeouts for the interval that you specify. Now let's go take a look at the options before we look at the time value. And for our options, we have the time. We can specify the time here. And we also have the option of specifying the random time. For the number of events, if we leave it empty, the timer will continue without stopping. If you want the timer to only fire four times, we can specify four and that will cause our timer to stop once we reach four events. So in our case, we can set the timeout to one since in this setup, you will be using the timeout to fire game over. It's not necessary. The other two options is reversed and time value format. You can use these two options to control what output you get from time value. Let's look at the time value formats that we have and we can pass seconds, minutes, seconds or fraction of seconds outputs. And this format will be used to format the output of the time value. So now that we can format our time this way, let's connect the time value to our value to label and let's preview what we get. So here's our timer inside a cube and we can see that it's counting up in our seconds place. Let's switch our timer to display just the seconds and drop the minutes. We can refresh that and now we can see that our timer is just displaying the seconds. If you want to count down instead of counting up, you can use the reversed option. So by setting the reverse option, if we refresh, now we can see that we start at 90, which is the time that we specified, and it's counting down. 
So this is the way you can use the entity option from the value to label to display the time. Now let's look how we can set the same thing up, but use our UI. So for that, in our label type, we have the UI option. And if we switch to UI, here we can specify the label that we added to our UI. And our label name is timer. So let's switch that to timer. Let's change our font. Click preview. And now we can see that that timer label that we added to our UI is now displaying our time. That's a quick demonstration of showing that the power of the value to label. So it's a very simple note to set up. So it supports the label types entity and UI. We also wanted to add a scene label support, but for some reason, the label inside the scene does not have the set text method. So that's why we haven't added that support. So in this video, we demonstrated how to add a timer to your game and using the value to label to display it. Hope you guys found this video useful. If you liked it, click on the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And until next time.